page for Tuesday, August 10th, 2021. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Democratic leaders in the New York State Assembly have laid out plans to quicken their impeachment probe of Governor Andrew Cuomo, saying the three-term Democrat should be removed from office for sexually harassing 11 women. Deputy political editor Dave Boyer reports Assembly Judiciary Committee Chairman Charles Levine said his panel will begin public hearings on August 23rd, aimed at crafting articles of impeachment covering the governor's sexual misconduct and related retaliation. Levine said they want to finish this process in a matter of weeks. The committee will then make a recommendation to the full New York Assembly on whether to impeach the governor. At least 86 of the Assembly's 150 members told the Associated Press last week they favor impeachment if Cuomo doesn't resign. The Assembly could hold an impeachment vote as early as September, but removing Cuomo from office would require a Senate trial that could be lengthy and involve numerous witnesses. Impeachment requires a simple majority vote. On Capitol Hill, progressive Senate Democrats are pushing to include a new federal health care program in the $3.5 trillion human infrastructure package outlined this week. Kerry Murakami reports the program would provide free medical insurance to 4.4 million more people, mostly low-income minorities, in Republican states that have not expanded Medicaid. Most states have chosen to expand Medicaid, the federal program for low-income Americans, to residents who otherwise earn too much to qualify. Twelve Republican-controlled states have not expanded Medicaid, leaving out those whose incomes are too high for Medicaid, but too low to qualify for the Affordable Care Act. Democrats expect to pass a resolution as soon as Tuesday to begin the process of drafting the massive package. They plan to pass the overall $3.5 trillion deal through budget reconciliation, a procedure that allows spending bills to bypass a filibuster in the Senate and be passed with a simple 51-vote majority. In foreign affairs, the rapid disintegration of Afghanistan has sparked a blame game as a series of stunning Taliban victories have left the United States-backed government in Kabul reeling and the Biden administration scrambling. Pentagon correspondent Ben Wolfgang reports insurgent Taliban fighters have now claimed their sixth provincial capital in Afghanistan, capping a weekend offensive in which the group overran government forces in strategically vital regions. That led to a warning from the U.S. Embassy in Kabul for any Americans that are still in the country to leave Afghanistan as soon as possible. The Taliban victories have also renewed skepticism about the reliability of Afghan security forces, which despite billions of dollars in investment and years of U.S. training, have suffered decisive defeats over the past several weeks. The deteriorating situation is providing ammunition to critics, who warned President Biden's total withdrawal of American troops would spark a chain reaction that would lead to the downfall of the Afghan government. Biden has argued there will never be a perfect time to leave Afghanistan, and, like his predecessor, former President Trump, he doesn't want to continue a forever war in a historically chaotic nation. A reminder that you can find all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. Don't have access to the Times yet? Visit WashingtonTimes.com slash George and get 25% off your annual subscription. In Chicago, Mayor Lori Lightfoot is calling for an end to the constant strife between police and citizens after a shooting over the weekend left one officer dead and another critically injured. Emily Zanto reports Lightfoot issued the call after the death of 29-year-old Chicago officer Ella French, who was shot and killed during a traffic stop Saturday night. Chicago Police Superintendent David Brown said officers had pulled over a car for a traffic stop with two men and one woman inside. A male passenger opened fire, and French and her partner shot back, striking one of the passengers. French was mortally wounded in the incident, and her partner is in critical condition. Brown noted that 11 Chicago officers had been shot this year, and another 27 had been targeted by gunfire. And finally, political analysts say Republicans are well-positioned to flip control of the House next year, but the battle for the Senate is a different story. Seth McLaughlin reports Democrats are benefiting the most from competitive Senate races playing out in states that President Biden carried in November, and their most vulnerable members have raised lots of campaign funds. J. Miles Coleman of the University of Virginia Center for Politics says it's the first midterm election since Franklin Roosevelt's presidency, where every seat the Democrats hold is in a state they won in the presidential election. Republicans netted a gain of six Senate seats in 2010 and nine in 2014, but Democrats are hoping to avoid a repeat of that scenario in 2022. The expected passage of the $1.2 trillion infrastructure deal this week will give them something to tout in their efforts to hold those seats when they return home for the August recess. Find all today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app and subscribe for free to the front page. Just search Washington Times on your favorite podcast platforms. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerber.